So we're talking about propositional equivalencies. Now, what we're considering on these things is the fact that under any thing of math where we have our toys and rules, one of the questions that we talk about is this idea of sameness. And really what we're trying to answer is, so if our toy happens to be these compound statements that are, sorry, not, propositions, which are declarative sentences that are either true or false, but not both, then we say we call those propositions. And then we have our rules, uh, which are the idea of the operations, whether they're unary. But one of the things that also is we have a question of what does it mean for compound proposition one? So it's really when is proposition number one the same as, say, proposition number two. And what word could I use for same? So we do things all the time like in algebra or arithmetic, like one plus two happens to be three. And we could go through why and defining all these things and the ideas of counting. But we go through things and we talk about what sameness means and we use different words like equal, equal functions. And so we're going to use a different word and obviously the word for this one is going to be to be an equivalency, which is the measure of our sameness. And so we do these all the time in every form of mathematics, is we try to ask, what does it mean to be the same? And when are they the same? And can we use a word for when we define them to be that? An example from a previous lecture was this idea of, let's say you can go through things and talk about bears. And we could go through and say, um, I don't see bears and I don't see berries. But on the other hand, would this be the same as I didn't see bears or berries? And we would use sentences like this. So let's say somebody comes up to you and says, you know, I didn't see bears and I didn't see berries. And the next person pops up and says, hey, I didn't see bears or berries. Are they saying the same thing? And that's really what the question is. It's gonna be either yes or no. Is this compound proposition, is the first compound proposition, the same as the second compound proposition? Are they saying the exact same thing? And, you know, what would fundamentally make sense about this? You know, when are you saying the same thing? Well, it would be that, well, one, you better talk about the same stuff. And both are. Both are talking about bears and berries and whether or not you see them. And the second would be, are they true or false? in the exact same conditions. In other words, if the first is true, then the second is true. If the first is false, the second is false. If the second is true, the first is true. In other words, we're talking about that if they form the exact same conditions. So for example, like the first one. If, if a person says, I didn't see bears and I didn't see berries, uh, you would go through here and say, okay, you know what, it's under and. And I know under and, uh, false usually dominates. And so it would get to the question of, how about we focus on when this is true? It's only true in one condition, which is you didn't see bears and you didn't see berries. That's the only time this is true. On the other hand, when would the bottom be true? Well, I'm negating a, a not of an or. So what's special about or is when it's, it's false, and it's only false when you didn't see bears and at the same time you didn't see berries and so when I negate that and so we would look at this and say okay do these form so this being false is the time when the negation is true so if I want the negation to be true I'm looking for the or to be false 
in the or is false when I don't see bears and I don't see berries, which is the exact same condition of the first. So it looks, you know, when we look at this, it's like, yeah, these, these are true and false in the exact same conditions. One's the top true about seeing bears and not berries, and one's the bottom true and seeing bears and berries. And I would look at this and say, okay, I can make a truth table out of that. We could say, you know, did I see bears? Did I see berries? When it is, when is it not the case of seeing bears and not the case of seeing berries? Versus, when is it I? It is not the case of bears or berries, right? And then so this would be true, true, false. I saw a bear. I saw a bear. I didn't. I didn't. Saw berries, I didn't. I saw bears, I didn't. And if I take this and of the negation, so flip all those, that's false, false, true, true. And negate all of those, this would end up being false, 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 true, because that'd be true and true. On the other hand, if we would take an or, that'd be true, 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 false. And then I negate that, which ends up being false, 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 true. So looking at that guy, it's pretty straightforward to say that, hey, look, if I call him number one, I call him number two. I notice that the difference of those two is that they're false in the same places and they're true in the same places, which actually gives me a way to check it, which would be if I would just simply use the by conditional between the two, I notice that, hey, look, the by conditional checks, are they the same truth values? Yeah. When one's false, the other's false. When one's true, the other's true. And so it ends up being that, which gets us to the next part of this, and this is the hint of what a sameness means and we're going to need some words and so from definitions so if a compound proposition is one always true we're going to call it a tautology Two. If it's always false, we're going to call it, we're going to give it its own word, and we're going to call it a contradiction. Now, a lot of times when people talk about a contradiction being you know, like the quote unquote of an impossibility, what we mean by a contradiction is that when I would look at its truth table or the possibilities of it, all I get is always false. So, for example, this being always true. It would be a tautology. If it ended up being always false, it would be a contradiction. And the three, if it's, on the other hand, sometimes true, sometimes false, and like for example this, that's sometimes true, sometimes false, then this is called a contingency. So for example, this guy right here, this is false contingent on the case that we have true, 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 false, false, true. On the other hand, this is true under the contingency that both bears and berries are false. And so contingency just means under particular conditions, it evaluates the true, evaluates the false. And so this idea of a tautology and what we see right there gives us our definition of what does it mean to be the same. And so here's our definition. P is logically equivalent to Q when it's biconditional is a tautology. And the notation we use here, well, in mathematics, we have lots of ways of talking about sameness. In algebra, we use equality. If we talk about approximate, we might do that. Um, if we say proportional, we might use this symbol. And then we notice that these all tend to look alike where we compare both sides. And so the notation that we use for this is to simply say that P triple arrow Q. And what, when you see this, this means that statement. So if I write P triple arrow Q, what it means is when I calculated the biconditional between P and Q, I got a tautology. So when you're checking for tautologies, when you're checking for logical equivalencies, like this right here, most people will, when they do their problems, will say, hey, look, 
it'll say things like same values. So they go, oh look, it's the same value, so it's logically equivalent. That's not what I want. The definition literally means you have to not just simply say, hey look, they're the same. What you need to do is go to this particular point. You need to go and show that the biconditional is a tautology. It's one extra line, it's just one extra part of your truth table. I want to see these two things, biconditional, all true. Doesn't always occur that way in the text. Um, I want you to do that just to be a little bit more rigorous and to know what you're doing and what these things actually mean. So given anything, so our example from above, and let's take one in particular. Let's just use what we did. So we have it is not the case that P or Q is supposed to be logically the same as not P and not Q. And so you would go through this and say P, Q is true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Normally you would go ahead and do your negations, not P, not Q, false, false, true, true, false, true, false, true. You would go ahead and do your not P and not Q. If we would and these false dominates, so we get false, 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 true. We would do P or Q which is true, 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 false, because as long as we have a true, it's true, it's false only when there's two false, and then we negate that thing. And we also get false, 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 true, and I notice that they're the same, so obviously not P or Q, biconditional with not P and not Q, is true, 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 true. Because false and false, 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 false if and only is false, false if and only is false. So we get true all the way around. And then normally when you would take this, you would just go ahead and draw your lines here on each of these. And you'd get this truth table. And you would there, so. So, because not P or Q, biconditional with not P and not Q is a tautology. That's this guy right there. Then we would say not P or Q is logically the same thing as not P and not Q. And you're done. And so this is how you would show by truth table so that's how to show logical equivalency by truth table. On the other hand, if you didn't want to use a truth table, you could do the same with a discussion. And so you would look back and if we would look at the problem and so you're definitely going to have to listen to this. So we have not P or Q is supposed to be the same thing as not P and not Q. And so we would look at this and so we would make a discussion. So you pick one of the sides and what you're going to do is you're either going to focus on when false or you focus on when true. Because if you focus on when false, Obviously, every other possibility is true. If you focus on true, every other possibility is false. And when we do that, normally what you would do is you choose the rare one. You know, for example, if I look at this under disjunction, right? Um, if we would look at the typical idea of an and, if we have two things, doesn't matter what they are, and I would take square and triangle, and so this is false, Try true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, this is true, false, false, false. Because false dominates, right? True is rare. There's only one time, right? So if I would look at an and, this is only true once, right? That row right there, right? The only possibility for an and to be true is if both not P and not Q are true. So that's what we focus on. We choose one of the things that are rare. So if I would use that idea of, well, okay, not P and not Q, 
is only true if not p is true and not q is true. But if not p is true, what does that tell us about p? That, that tells us p is actually false. And if not q is true, that tells us that q is false because it's the negation of something is true. And if the negation of something is true, and so p is false and q is false. Okay, now what about the other side? What about this not p or q? And we would look at that and say, all right, so if I focused on looking at when the object is true on this side, I'm going to have to look at when this is true. So when's that true? Well, this is true. So if I have a negation of something being true, this is true only when P or Q is false, right? Because I'm negating a false, it would end up being true. But for an or to be false, it means that P, then both of those must be false at the same time. Because under or, that's the only time. Normally or is true. It's only false if it's false or false. And so P is false and Q is false. And hey, look. This is true only when those two are false, and this side's true only if those two are false, and that's the only time that that happens. And so, same conditions. Hence, logically equivalent. So what it's really doing is if we look back, if I would make the truth table of it, right, what we're noticing is that the and is only true, right? That's the special case. The and, why is it taking so long to save? All right. Do, 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 do. No, don't crash. <laughs> the and is only true when both of these are false. And then I had the same argument, well, under or, right? The negation is only true when the or is only false, which happens to be what? Under the exact same condition. So it was just a word explanation of what this table means, which is one of the reasons why I want you to understand. When I say know the truth table, I don't want you to just simply memorize T's and F's. I want you to know why there is a T there, why there is an F there. And that's how we can show things are logically equivalent. So that's our first part. This, this is what logical equivalencies are.